What do you think? Nice. I have one move. With your head? No, it's coming. With your head. She's master her dance. I can do it. That's better. <laughs> I'm getting my down. All right, all right, all right, all right. You're like contemplating your moves for next time. Dimitri Downing back with Mita Unshackled. We're here at Berlin ICBC meeting great members of the American and international cannabis industry. People to know, people to contact as you uh, evolve into the cannabis industry and want to know more about this and that. Uh, again, I'm Dimitri Downing here with... Destiny Nicole Blanco. And Julian Tovar. Oh, we got, we, he, he, he did, no, you're an expert. You're a professional. You just jumped in there. <laughs> wow. I, I thought it was my time. It yeah. is your time. Time Juli to shine, baby. Julian, Julian, Julian. Uh, did you say, you say, you say Julian in the Julian. United States? No, in the United States it said Julian. Julian. Julian is the correct pronunciation. Like Julian. Like Julian. In the United States I said Julian. Julian. Like, like, like John Travolta. I want to sound interesting. Yeah. But also there is a lot of girls by the name Julian. Julian. Yeah. Julian. Is a Juliana. No, Julian. Like, they just changed an E. I'm not a big know. fan of the, the changing translate, the, the t changing pronunciation of, like, names. I'm not a big fan, but with yours, I am. I like the Julian. 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 I like it. Julian. All right. So, Julian, you're, you're, oh, it's good to see you. He's good to see old you. Old friend of mine. Um, absolute expert. You've been in this industry for a while. You are, are involved in, in conferences. You're also my go-to Colombian export, uh, expert. How did you get involved in this industry? The reason why I got involved in the industry was because of my cousin. He came to the United States right before Colombia was going to legalize, but when it was in the process and they were talking about legalization and all this stuff. So he spent quite some months in my house and I was able to see how he was passionate about the cannabis and the industry. So when he was when it was time for him to get back to Colombia, I was like, hey, I know you're trying to build this project if you need an investor let me know i can maybe use some of my money or some 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 of my contacts he has money ladies no a little bit just a little bit <laughs> like I, the dating I, game. oh no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding don't call out the wrong ones on our no, show he, he's a successful businessman for other things but go ahead but um but that's how i got into the business so <laughs> i started exploring he called me and then you know i said the best way to learn about the business is let's just start going to conferences so my first conference was MJB's back in 2017. It was like 17,000 people that year. I think that was the first year they moved into the convention center. Right. And, and after that, I started following them and going to a, a lot of conferences. And at some point, I decided, you know what? At some point, I'm going to need money for my own business. So let's do something that will be beneficial not only for me but for the industry in Colombia in general mm -hmm. and I know that in Colombia there is no there was at that time there was no uh, cannabis conference B2B you know like there was cannabis conferences yes but they were not like really B2B it was more like B2C or some sort of conference um, and then I started meeting people and that's when I met you in Anaheim and we make it work after that. So you run the most important B2B conference in Colombia now? Yeah, I would like to say it's one of the most important in Latin America. Because my approach to the industry is not just for the Colombian people, but it's also for the South American people, the Central American people. So it's a way to connect from all over the world. That's why I'm here in Berlin. Because I want to I wanna bring people from Europe to Colombia, to South America, mm -hmm. and to make Cartagena the center of the cannabis industry in Latin America. So if you, have a, if you have a growth in, I don't know, let's say Mexico, and you, you have a pharmaceutical in Uruguay, then you can connect in Cartagena, you know, start that connection there and go from there. You know, because not every connection makes a meaningful business decision you know i just had a doing moment when when muadib my favorite paul muadib says an emperor shadan 
Arrakis shall be known as the center of the universe. <laughs> Remember that? Dune? <laughs> no. The people, the spice? The uh -huh. spice? You said, you said it. Cartagena, oh, the center. The center of Latin America, you know, for <laughs> businesses. The, the, oh, yeah. the, well, the, I agree with your vision. I've always been a big supporter of yours. Cartagena, it, historically, is a hub. It is. Of trade. It is. And South America is going to be producing unbelievable qualities and quantities of cannabis over the next 10, 20 years, forever, forth, as soon as the regulations get sorted out. And I think at the end, it will be more about the quality than the quantity, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think that's what it's always been. It's just some people don't understand that the quantity is not as important as the quality. I agree. Yeah, and n nobody really knows how the supply chain is going to end up and, and what's going to change and what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very exciting to, to see what you're doing down there. And I think it's very, it's cutting edge. Well, we're trying to also bring the regulators, you know. Yeah. Every single conference, we invite the Minister of Justice, the ICA, the INVIMA, which are, um, one is for the cultivators, the other one is the one that regulates all the products, like the FDA of Colombia. So we try to bring them in so people can get first-hand information. Not like, oh, I heard from someone, but, you know, I saw the director of the Mbima, he was telling us that this is what we need to do, this is the procedure, that they're backlog, whatever the reasons may be, you know, but get it firsthand. And that's what we're trying to do, at least in Colombia. The idea is also to be able to bring from other nations, you know, Costa Rica, Argentina, Chile, Brazil, all this stuff. But but it's it's a good, um, I think it's a good project. It's still growing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough infancy. because the, the Colombian legal status for cannabis is medical slash export slash. Yeah, well, the, the initial law was export to a pharmaceutical grade where whatever you do in cannabis has to be pharmaceutical grade. That being said, it means it has to be pills, has to be oil, it has to be finished product. Mm -hmm. And what people don't understand when they get into the industry was, okay, you can cultivate cannabis and it will be up a beautiful plant in three months or less, or and then you have your flo uh, your flowering uh, time and then your, your drying period. But getting a product into just the regular world, it takes over two years getting the licenses, getting all the stuff. So that's that's a lot of time. Yeah. That's a lot of time. And a lot of people went broke or left the business because it was taking too long for them to see their return. You know? so, so what's the future of Colombian cultivation, Colombian cannabis about? What's it all, What's happening now? Well, we're very excited, me personally. And uh, I've seen... You look excited. Uh, I've, <laughs> I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen a few, a few people being excited about the new government. <laughs> Uh, the new government is all for has been very forthcoming on legalizing uh, recreational cannabis mm -hmm. or adult use, as they wanted to call it in Colombia, mm -hmm. and and I think that's the way to be. That's the way to go. I mean, the initial phase is the medical cannabis, yes, but then the recreational um, opens up so many more doors. You know, yeah. opens up so many more businesses, opportunities, and and also if you legalize the recreational, there is also a how do you call it, like a justice issue. You know, the, there will be less people arrested for carrying cannabis right. or marijuana or for smoking. And like I said to everybody, when you open up to recreational cannabis. In Colombia, people tend to say, oh, the mariguaneros in the in the park smoking weed, blah, 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 my kids in the park, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That seems like I love that word, mariguaneros. <laughs> I used to, <laughs> when I was growing up, yeah. there was a big park in the back of my house, and we had some mariguaneros coming every single night late to smoke their weed. Yeah. But if you have an open mine and if if it's legal then you won't have these people going right. there you will smoke it in your house your balcony yeah, yeah, yeah. outside of your house then there will be businesses like in europe that they go to a coffee shop they get their best weed they smoke it there or there will be restaurants that are friendly to cannabis users mm -hmm. or even hotels you know like pet friendly hotels mm -hmm. they're really the same thing 
And that way, people won't have to hide in the shadows. And they will just do it openly. And, of course, there are some people that don't like the smell because it has a strong smell. Um, but it's it's just part of part of the life, I guess. Yeah, and, and you know, we're, all jurisdictions go through those uh, uh, issues, those transitions. Um, but I just wanted to sing a song. Yo no soy marijuanero. Yo no soy marijuanero. Soy what? No soy capitán. Oh, yeah. I'm not a smoker. What is it? What, how do you say cultivator? Cultivador. Yo no soy marihuanero, soy no cultivador. cultivador, soy cultivador, okay. soy cultivador. Oh, yeah. I get it, I get it. it. Right? That, that would be a nice uh, song about ba, it, you know? La, bamba. No, wouldn't be, I guess the marihuanero <laughs> bailas la bamba too. <laughs> it, it, it's all fun and games. Well, we want to make sure we introduce you to the, uh, to the, um, to the audience so people know where to get in touch with you, how to find you, and what projects you're involved in. We have, uh, you, know, you know who that is over there? No. Uh, this is, you know, conferences, so people walking around and stuff. Um, that's the uh, government relations director for all of Weed Maps. Wow. Weed Maps. She, she's a pretty big deal. Nice. Yeah. I want to so, meet her. Yeah, no, I'll introduce you right now. But so how do people find you and stuff? Well, they can call me up. They can go to on Expo Cannabis website, expocannabis.com, with that Z at the end, as in Zebra, Expo Cannabis, and go to info and... Once they shoot uh, an email, they'll go directly to my inbox, and I'll I'll answer every single email that comes through that inbox. He, he's very accessible, the, folks. He's that's a, the easiest way. He's a good guy. He's very accessible. He's an honest guy. Uh, come to Colombia. Come to Cartagena for the next conference. Please, come to Colombia. I mean, everybody from anywhere in the world is more than welcome to come and find those connections in Latin America, those needed connections you don't have to go to mexico then go to costa rica then go to panama then go to argentina or chile or peru or ecuador separately you're going to be spending a lot of money doing all that travel but if you come to colombia you'll find anybody you will find somebody for every single place yeah and you know you cannot ignore the fact that this is going to be a global supply chain eventually i think a lot of people like want to get rich in like one two three years and don't have like a long-term vision for the industry. Um, but uh, those of us who do care, maybe just intellectually just bored or something, I'm really fascinated by cannabis, want to know about the global supply chain. Of course. So that's what the underlying theme is here. So we're glad to have you, and we thank you for being on our podcast, and we will see you when? I don't know. It's Oh, my conference is in May no. 24 to the 26, 2023. We just did ours last no, week. No, I know, but when will we see you again? We'll see you when we see you. See we'll you when see you when we see you? I don't know. Uh, MGM or Pact or? Oh, Doug, Jamaica. You going to Jamaica? No. It does in September, right? Yeah, September. Um, at the beginning of September? Yeah. No, I have a, I have a personal trip. But I think I'll either go to, I, I've been wanting to go to Arizona to meet some of the cannabis yeah, check, Folks, check out yeah. one of our Phoenix events. It's easy flight in and out when you're in the area. So plan your West Coast trip because I know you're on the East It's Coast. a couple of hours, I think. Yeah, definitely. So well, we'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. <laughs> we'll see you when we see you. <laughs> All right, thanks. Nice to see you. Nice Appreciate it.